There are many different kinds of turkey calls on the market today. In fact, there are so many that it would be impossible to list them all here. But all turkey calls fall in one of two categories, either friction or air driven. In a previous video, we shared with you the do's and don'ts of using box calls. Today, we're going to show you how to use pot calls. Pot calls, commonly known as slate calls, come in all shapes, sizes, and styles. They can be round, square, or rectangular. They're commonly called slate calls because the first calls used slate for the friction surface. Native Americans use smooth, thin river stones cupped in their hand to emulate turkey sounds. Today, glass, aluminum, crystal, titanium infused glass, and other materials are used in pot calls. There are more than I can tell you, but the list is long. Pot calls require a striker to make turkey sounds. These two are almost endless in design and composition. To get started, first let's discuss the composition of pot calls and strikers and what makes them work. The pot is a cup that holds the surface material. The surface material is a piece of glass, slate, crystal, or whatever material the striker contacts to make turkey sounds. The sound chamber is an open area between the cup and surface material. The sound board is a raised area inside the sound chamber. Combined, the sound board and sound chamber make the call resonate. Strikers are as diverse as pot calls, but all strikers consist of a peg and a bell. The peg makes contact with the call while the bell reduces vibration of the peg and adds weight to the striker. It also helps determine the pitch of sounds made when the striker is run across the call. Now that we know the parts of the call and the function of each, let's get started on how to use a pot call to make turkey sounds. It's important to remember that this is a friction call and the surface of the call and the end of the peg need to be rough. To accomplish this, we use sandpaper or other abrasive material to rough these areas and increase friction between the call and the striker. Another thing to remember is that your skin has a natural oil on it. So you don't want to touch the surface of the call or the end of the peg because the oil will reduce the friction. Hold the call with the tips of your thumb and fingers on your left hand if you are right-handed. Just the opposite if you're left-handed. All pot calls have what I call sweet spots, meaning there are places on the surface that produce the sweetest turkey sounds. Generally speaking, these sweet spots are at 10 and two o'clock on the call surface and normally around three quarter of an inch from the edge of the cup. Hold the striker with your thumb, first and middle finger of your right hand if right-handed. Left hand for lefties. Bring the striker to the call and rest your hand on the cup, like this. I call this marrying your hands. This adds stability and allows consistency when running the call. The basic call of the wild turkey is a yelp. If you can yelp, you can call a turkey. To make the first sound, tip the striker slightly away from your body, apply a small amount of pressure, and draw the striker towards your body. The tilt of the striker is called the angle of attack. Now that you are making a sound, make an oval motion with the striker on the call. Do not lift the striker from the call surface. This produces the key oak sound of a yelp. Different turkeys have different pitches to their voice, but the cadence remains the same. You can change the pitch of a pot call by applying more pressure to the surface of the call with the striker. Your cadence should sound like this. The cluck is another common call of turkeys. To make clucks on a pot call, place a striker like making yelps. Skip the striker towards your body to make a single note cluck. To make the purr, lightly drag the striker towards your body, allowing it to skip across a call. Combine the cluck and you have a cluck and purr. Cutting is a series of excited clucks. Simply repeat the cluck in a broken, excited cadence. Pot calls are relatively easy to use, are very effective, and can be used to make almost every sound in the turkey vocabulary. They produce realistic turkey sounds and add to your options when calling wild turkeys. 
One drawback to pot calls is that they occupy your hands when a turkey is close, so you need to put it down and be on your gun as the gobbler approaches. As with all things worth doing, practice makes perfect. There are many videos, DVDs, and audio sources available today that will help you learn pitch and cadence of turkey sounds. Follow these tips, practice with your call, and I think you'll find a pot call will soon become part of your turkey hunting arsenal.